practical decision making in a practice surgery. Episode 11 The 5 Step Practical Approach, Part 8. In the previous video, I talked about different types of intraocular lenses and the difference between them in terms of range of vision, induced dysphotopsia, and affection of contrast sensitivity. In this video, I am going to talk about the workup for clear lens extraction when mono or mini mono vision is planned. There are eight points to highlight. The first point is age. I don't find an excuse to go for this off-label and invasive procedure in young populations. That's because some surgeons may perform this operation for young patients having very high myopia that cannot be corrected by corneal refractive surgery or by fake IL implantation. Such very high refractive error is usually axial, hence the risk of retinal detachment with this operation, that is, apart from the loss of accommodation and the complications of premium lenses such as decentration that lead to severe dysphotopsia, especially coma. In addition, young patients are aware of minor dysphotopsia much more than older patients. In general, the only accepted excuse in people older than 45 years is a spherical equivalent of more than plus four diopters when LASIK is not possible. The non-dominant eye should be determined as it is the eye that will usually be targeted for near in monovision and mini monovision. The patient should show positive tolerance test with glasses. In this test, the trial frame is used with the optimum spectacle correction. This is an example. Let us assume that this is the patient's view. The left eye is the non-dominant eye. The right eye has plus 5.5 diopter sphere and the left eye has plus 6 diopter sphere. We ask the patient to look at distant object almost 5 to 6 meters such as a TV screen. Then we add plus 1.5 diopters in front of the non-dominant eye. This will blur the distance vision in the non-dominant eye. Then we ask the patient to look with both eyes at the screen and around the room to see if they see any cross blur. Cross blur means that the blur in the non-dominant eye is affecting the quality of view of the dominant eye. If the patient does not feel it, the non-dominant eye can be targeted to be myopic by minus 1.5 diopters sphere. On the other hand, if the patient feels the cross blur, the plus 1.5 add should be reduced in 0.25 steps until there is no cross blur. The non-dominant eye will be targeted accordingly. For example, if the ad was reduced to reach plus 0.75 in front of the non-dominant eye to avoid cross blur, the non-dominant eye should be targeted to be myopic by minus 0.75 diopters. When the ad is between plus 1.25 and plus 1.75 diopters, the patient is eligible for monovision. If the ad is between plus 0.5 and plus 1, the patient is eligible for mini monovision. And if the ad is plus 0.25 or 0, the patient is not eligible for monovision or mini monovision. Now, with the final comfortable ad, the spectacle prescription is converted into contact lens prescription. The patient should wear the contact lenses at least for one week to experience very well all tasks that they need in their daily life, especially PC, reading a book, and using the mobile. The final decision to go for this method must be made by the patient himself. To get the optimum results, corneal tomography should be regular. 
However, mild irregularities are not contraindication for this method. But this should be confirmed by corneal aberometry. Corneal aberometry is mandatory for two reasons to study corneal spherical aberration and to study corneal coma and trefoil. Corneal aberometry display should be adjusted on the 6 mm zone. There are two important rules in this regard. The higher the spherical aberration, the better the depth of focus. The higher the RMS of coma and trefoil, the worse the quality of vision. When the RMS of the spherical aberration is in between 0.35 and 0.60 diopters, there will be good depth of focus, which assists reading and intermediate vision. This is why we see some patients after cataract surgery can read in spite of monofocal IOL implantation that was targeted for distance. That's because their corneas have high spherical aberration. In other words, when you find a cornea with RMS spherical aberration between 0.35 and 0.6 diopters, implantation of a monofocal IOL that is targeted to be around minus 0.5 of myopia will give good vision for all distances. However, such corneas are rarely encountered in normal population. On the other hand, when the RMS of coma and trefoil is more than 0.5 diopters, the quality of vision will be affected, such as in this case. And this high RMS value should be questioned. In other words, the patient has high corneal irregularities and maybe an ectopic corneal disease. Talking about how to read a barometry and its clinical interpretation will come in a separate video later in this 5 minute plus series. Finally, Specular microscopy and sulcus-to-sulcus -sulcus and white-to-white -white measurements should be considered in the same way of fake IOL implantation as discussed in episode 9. One may ask, why should we study sulcus-to-sulcus -sulcus or white-to-white -white although we are not going to implant a fake IOL? The answer is very simple. Clear lens extraction is usually performed in extreme refractive errors, which in most cases are of axial origin, which means that the structure and dimensions of the anterior segment are not in the average distribution of normal population. I mean, sulcus to sulcus is larger than usual in axial myopic eyes and smaller than usual in axial hyperopic eyes. This may force us to order a special haptic diameter for such eyes. To sum up, the patient should be older than 45 years, the refraction should be in the plus side, and more than plus 4 diopter sphere of spherical equivalent, and LASIK is not suitable. The non-dominant eye should be determined. The patient must show a reasonable positive test with glasses and is comfortable with the trial of contact lenses. The cornea should be regular and corneal aberrometry should show RMS less than 0.5 diopters of coma and trefoil. Specular microscopy should be studied carefully and sulcus to sulcus or white to white must be considered in axial or extreme refractive errors. In the next video, I will talk about the workup when premium intraocular lenses are planned. Thank you very much.